So we're here today at the fam world famous Greenbrier Resort in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia. And we're with a person who I think uh, exemplifies what it means to be a professional, no matter what industry you're in. His name is Frank Mosley. Frank, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where did you grow up? Now, me, I was born in a little place called Thurman, West Virginia. And, and it's a little town in Fayette County. It's a nine mile, everybody know what Beckley is. It's nine mile west of Beckley. It's a little town, I think it's three people there now. But it was about five families when I was there, just as a small town. And I was born nine children. I was just two out of nine. I was number two. And we, now we, I, grew, I grew up poor. I didn't have anything. I didn't have a bicycle, didn't have a TV, we didn't have an automobile, we didn't have a bicycle, even like the other kids. But we had plenty to eat and a place to sleep. That's all we had. And I, when I was a boy, I used to, we had a, I lived on a lot of farmers. And these farmers would raise uh, uh, corn and beans, but, and they'd, they'd raise what you call pole beans. So in, anyway, for me, to make a living, I always have worked. I never wanted to be a bum. I never did like to, you know, beg. So I would cut poles for them guys for, to, for that beans to run up for one penny per, per coal, per bean. One penny per, per, per pole. I would cut a hundred poles for a dollar and take them to them to the farmers just to make a living. That's the way I, my dad told me. He said, son, say, when you grow up, say, you don't owe me nothing but be, take care of yourself and treat a man. He just said, well, he's black, white, poor, rich, fat, skinny, ugly, like you want to be treated and you'll be treated and you'll make your life. And that's what I do now here at the Greenbrier. When a person walk in that door, I put myself in their place like I was walking in there, you know, treat them like I want to be treated. It's very easy done that way. And uh, so anyway, I worked on the railroad for 10 years. I worked in the coal mine for a year, and I got laid off on the railroad. I didn't get fired. I got, didn't have enough seniority. My dad had 34 years on that section. I didn't have a few years, so every time I looked, I was laid off, laid off, laid off. Last time they laid me off, I said, I'm sick of being laid off. I want to find a job. So I got in my car. I live from now. It take me about an hour and a half to go where I was born. I, my car had been repossessed because I cut off, got cut off on the railroad. And, and the man to come and took my car, the, the, the uh, finance company. So I bought my brother's car and got to traveling around. And I went to a place called Ravenswood, West Virginia, to get a job. It just, they would just open up a, I mean you call it an aluminum plant, something like a steel mill. So I went in there and asked for a job. And they asked me three questions. <laughs> this is the truth. They said, they said uh, what weighed it more, a pan of cotton or a pan of steel? And which one weighed it more? The same thing. It just take more cotton than it do steel. <laughs> so I answered that question. They asked me another question. They said, if you were an airplane and looking down, what color would a cow be, black or white? Everything from the airline, it, it looks dark. So I answered that question. Then he asked me, he said, if you had a tub of water and you wanted to get cold quick, what would you lose, a great big hunk of ice or little hunks? Anybody know that little hunks of ice would on top before a big lump? So I answered all those questions. And then I took the test and I passed the test. And you know what he told me? He said, I can't use you, you too little. See, I, I was always a little man, so that hurt my feelings because I was too little. I couldn't get the job in a steel mill, so I'm still out of work. The man that repossessed my car was $33 a month out behind $99. That was a lot of money back in those days, but I didn't have it. So anyway, I was standing at the door of the plant when the 3 o'clock whistle blew for me to change shift. Guy walked by little than me. I looked at the guy, I said, I know that somebody, why they, how these guys look, you know what it was? I was black. I'm not ashamed to tell him. Right. They was not high, but he didn't tell me that. He just used my 
my status as an excuse, so he kicked me out. So uh, I drove the car back home, and I came to the Greenbrier. I didn't know such a thing as a Greenbrier. I just happened to be walking, riding by, and seeing this big building. So I walked in the person. Back in them days, you didn't go by computer. They had personnel people. You just walk in the personnel and asked the gentleman for a job. So I walked in, it was a lady there, and I never forget her name. Her name was Miss Catherine Burley. And, and she looked at me, he said, we don't have no open. She didn't even ask my name or nothing. I just said, I'd like to apply for a job. She said, we don't have no owners. Get out of here. I got in my brother's car and drove back about an hour and a half. I looked at this building. I said, they get this building in. It got to be something for somebody. Watch digits, watch windows, watch parts, sweep the floors. All I wanted was a job. I didn't care what it was. So the next morning, I got in my brother's car and drove back up to the White Suffer Spring. I walked in the personnel office. And the lady looked at me and said, I told you yesterday that we didn't have no open said, get out of here. And I did it, I left. I said, thank you. And left and walked out. The third day I did the same thing. I bought my brother's car and drove back up here about a hour, an hour and a half. Walked in the personnel office. And she looked at me, the lady named Miss Catherine Burley. She looked at me and said, I told you two days ago to get out of here. We we don't have time for just, you know. People just in the way. I started at the door. I really did. She said, hold it. She said, you seem so determined. She said, I got a temporary job open. Now remember this now, temporary. She said, I got a gentleman off with a hernia operation. She said, he might come back tomorrow. He might come back next week. He might come back next month. Whenever he come back, out you go. I said, I'll take it. And she said, you go down. It's up on the hill, the person that problem. She said, you go down in the hotel, and it's a lady down named Miss Margaret Kappa. I said, in the world is Miss Margaret Kappa? So you go down and talk to her and tell her that I'm the man that sent you down to take this temporary job. So I walked to her office, scared, hungry, no job, no car, you know what I mean. And I walked in. She said, you the gentleman Miss Burr sent me? I said, yes, ma'am, I'm the man. I can't use you, you're too little. I said, here I go again, my side. So I told her, I said, Miss Kappa, I said, I've been in the Korean War. I got a wounds over Korea. I said, I worked on the railroad eight years before I come here. I said, I work in the coal mines a year. I'm sure that whatever kind of work you got to do that I can do it. She said, I got great big dressers upstairs. She had, it's furniture, and I like it in the room now, it's different. And she said, those dressers have to be moved at least once a week to dust behind them. I said, if you just give me a chance, I'm sure I can move that dresser in dust behind it once a week. And she said, well, say you temporary. <laughs> and I did, I took the job temporary. And I was a houseman on the third floor. Anywhere else they call it junction, here they call it houseman. And so she said, well, you come to work in the morning at eight o'clock. I said, yes, ma'am. I was right here at eight o'clock, shift later. And she put me with a guy named Miller Seams. He was training me. Till this guy get back. Now when he come back, I was a little short guy, had a hump in his back. T didn't nobody tell me to leave. Now what would you done? I just stayed. Oh, and I was here 50 some years temporary. <laughs> <laughs> That's the gospel truth. She didn't, didn't nobody tell me to leave. And I wasn't about to go nowhere bad as I need a job. And I've been here 59 years. About a year ago, one demanded to holler across to the room. Frank, you part of it? Now, I don't know what it was put in the book or uh, took the person out to it, but as far as I know, I'm still temporary. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've, and I've had about 10 different jobs. You know, I did everything this whole time. I washed teeth, I washed pots, washed windows, sweep the floors, made the beds up, waited in the dining room, kept and I did about every job to be done here, and I'm still temporary. As far as I'm concerned, I'm still temporary. Nobody didn't tell me the difference, so I'm just asking you, cause what would you doing with really, using my shape? Did nobody tell you to leave? I just kept working right beside him until they kept, <laughs> kept moving you off. <laughs> well, I think we can see that uh, we have a man of great determination here to do what he did back yeah. then. In a month, in a minute, Frank, I want you to tell the people about all the folks that you've met over the now, years. Now, that, that, to pick out a special one, it would be very hard to miss so many. But 
the, the, the gentleman would have to be Bob Hope. Oh. Now you talking about nice to be who he is, you know. He is just as nice as he could be, friendly and talk with you just like any other person. And the woman would have to be so many of them. Princess Grace. Oh. Yeah, I met her in person. I've been all in person, talked with them and shook the hand. And she did, and she's nice. And I met every president from Eisenhower up. I met Eisenhower more than anybody because he the one that was the overseer of the Cold War bunker being here. Yes. So I met him a couple of times a year. Now you know where he would come? When he come, it would be two of them. The first man walk in in case some, some snub want to shoot him, he would be dressed just alike and look like you could only tell him apart. But he wasn't Eisenhower. That's the truth. He'd come in and, and Eisenhower didn't come maybe 15, 20 minutes later. But, I, but you know, I met them all. I met them, and I met the Kinsey's, I met the Bushes, I met all the presidents, my, you know, the ones that come in. Now I've been here 59 years. I meet thousands of people a day, and you would never guess how many grouchy people I've met in 59 years. You'd never guess. Two. Now that's one every 30 years. That ain't bad for many people as I see. And the truth we both of them from the state of Maryland. They had different, different times, you know what I mean? One was a lady and one was a man. And you know what the lady fussed about? She, I said, lady, I said, you coming back? She said, no, I ain't never coming back. And I'm trying to be nice. I said, lady, I'm sorry. Uh, what's wrong? You know what she fussed about? That photo put 64 in. The roads were crooked. I have nothing to do with the highway. <laughs> what's with me? She, she said, I ain't never coming back. The roads are crooked. I said, OK. I, I was nice to her. The next man, he, he drove in, he had a, a long, he had a kind of a mini bus. It was about eight men in that bus. And they come here to have a good time and play golf, you know. And he told all those employees out front, he said, any of these gentlemen who want this car, let them use it. But when we parked it, we put them in his name. You know what I mean. So every time the guy used the car, they would bring it back and put them in their name. So when they got ready to check out, he asked for the car under his name. And we got three or four in the car parked here. And he cursed everybody, just got close to him. I walked up to him in a nice way. I didn't care, I let him curse with that. And I said, sir, I said, if you just quiet down just a little bit and give us some of the names, so Jim said, riding with you, we'll get your car. You don't know what the hell you're doing. You ain't no damn man. You, you just, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? I, just, I said, well, sir, I said, that's the only way you can get you a car. The first name he gave us there it was. You know, some of his buddies. Now, now, now why fuss with us about something? It was his fault. He told us to let people use the car. He asked for it under his name, but it was under one of his buddies' names. That's the only two grumpy people I've met since I've been here. Two, well, I, two grumpy people two, in, 59 in 59 years. 59 years. <laughs> And that ain't a bad record, is it? That's not bad. I hear I see them every day out there in downtown. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you, I'll tell you another trick I done. I was here one day working on the front door, and I, and I was loading a car. It just, they had quite a bit of luggage, and it was a lady standing behind me. She had a satchel on her back, but look, about that size. She had it on her shoulder, and I seen it on her shoulder, but I didn't know it. She was, but I was loading the car, had my back to it, and I loaded the car. And I said, lady, you want me to put that bag in your car? And she said, no, I'll take care of this bag. She was fine with me. She wanted to carry it. You know, it was her bag. So I loaded the car, shut the trunk, took it in the car, and drove off. And there was a bag sitting in the corner behind me. I didn't see her set the bag down. I didn't know whose bag it was. It sat there all day long. This ain't no lie. That bag sat there. I tried to give it away. Every car I loaded, I said, is this your bag? I said, is this your bag? It ain't mine. I said, is this your bag? You know, every color. No, it ain't mine. That bag sat there all day long. It was on a Sunday. We were busy. So I was on the shift, 7 to 3 that day. About 10 minutes to 3, time he'd go home. I look in the bag. The first thing we look for is a prescription ball. Everybody got the address. You yeah. have to get it back to him. You know, what you think was in that bag? Just, just take it. Yeah. What do you think was in it? What was it? 
$100,000 in cash money. My goodness. Cash money, $100,000. They said she was from South Dakota, said she owned a bank in South Dakota. So I read she didn't, oh, she can't carry the money with her when she left her record. Anyway, when she missed it, she was in the airplane on her way home. And when she called back, I had turned the bag in to the proper authorities. There was so much money in that bag, they would not ship it to her. In one stack, they put $33,000 in three different boxes, 40 of them short to get it back to her. The lady didn't even tell me thank you. She didn't. She could have gave me $5 anyway. She didn't give me not a dime for turning her money back in. I got a brother-in-law in, in the state of Ohio. He said, you one of the biggest fools in the world. He said, I kept it. It wasn't nothing I got caught with, just acts, you know, everything I've been at. But it wasn't checks and things like that, you know. It was just plain cash money. She had it wrapped in stack. Frank, I don't know if you recall, but in 2013, my wife and I asked you if we could spend a little time with you. And we, st we moved away from the front door of the Greenbrier and you, uh, talked with us for about a half an hour and mm -hmm. told us a, a story about your life then. But the thing that impressed me, and I don't know if you remember this or not, was you, number one, you only looked at either me or my wife. You didn't look around and see if the President of the United States was checking. No, 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 no. And you made a comment, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Elliott, you're, oh, the, right. you're the two most important people in my life right now, and I always remember that. That's right. Now, just like I told you, the way I treat a person, when they walk in that door, I don't care who they are, I'm them, right away. I switch places in case I was walking in your home or your yeah. place of business, and I would be treated like I want, you know, like I want to be treated. That's the, and that's very easy done. If a lot of people do that. Now I'm gonna tell you another thing: the, the way they hire us here, when they first hire you here, you're not hired for 30 days. They give you 30 days grace period, you know, to see do you make time, do you. Wear your uniform right, do you, you know? And then after 30 days, they take you away, you go down and join the union, you're in. But if that, after that, then they say, well, we saw, we thought we had an opening, but they'll make some excuse to reach out. And that's, and that's a good thing to do, mm -hmm. you know, because you've got a lot of people, they come, all they want is pay their off day. But me, really, I just love my job. If they didn't need me, they never would have hired me. And I try to do the best I can, I try to give no problem whatsoever. I've been off three days in, 50, in 59 years, you know, besides my off day. That's all. I don't believe in calling in sick. And I had one gentleman call in sick when they said his dog carried his shoe off. That's his excuse. <laughs> 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 you know, really, that was his excuse. He said his dog hit my shoe. And so he didn't come to work. Any kind of excuse, but I'm, I'm not that way. I just don't believe in it. Laying off, I'm here every day from 9 to 5, 5.30, every day. It's rain, sleet, slow, and I have no excuse not to come in bad weather, but only let folk I can walk. <laughs> so I have no excuse not to come in. <laughs> Frank, I'm sure you're like most people. You, some days you wake up and you don't feel quite as, oh. as good, and other days, what's, what's the secret of your success, do you think? Now, me personally, I, I, I really don't know. I just love. I just love people, and I love my job, and to tell the truth, a lot of mornings at my age now, I do feel like I want to stay in, but I just did, to think of where I came from, to think of what, you know, the, my younger days when I didn't have anything, didn't think of the days when I didn't have a job, and I was looking for work, and I said, well, so I might as well be here doing nothing, get paid for it, and be sitting at home on the porch. So I, I, I make myself get up a lot of mornings, that's the truth. It's not easy, especially when you get 84 years old. My legs get tired, and I have to, another big thing about my job, I got to act happy whether I am or not at times. <laughs> really, you know what, just tell the truth. And so I just motivate, and I work with a guy out there at the front door, one of the gentlemen, he told me, he said, Frank, let me tell you something. He said, I ain't gonna live as long as you work here. <laughs> It's like, a, it's like a Broadway play in a sense, isn't it? Right. You, even if you don't feel well, the, 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 the play must go on. The huh? play must go on. That, that don't say the mail must go through. So that's the way I feel about it. I feel that I have to be able to open that door for somebody, one way or the other, what I feel like it or not. And a lot of days I might have a headache, might have a backache, but I got to smile and be nice. And it's very easy when you 
do it my way, because I put myself in your place, you know, right quick. I said, I won't want to walk in the place by saying that staring at me. You know, so I smile. You know, don't feel like it all the time. Then I come in this room, she didn't hide it one more. <laughs> you hide out, hide out for a few minutes. Yeah. A, few a little minutes. nap for guys our age is pretty good. Isn't pretty it? good, yeah. So <laughs> I, I do that, really. I do. And then I got to run the building now. I'm doing right now exactly what they want me to do, which is nothing. I don't work at all anymore. I don't lift nothing. I just show up. Well, you're an icon. You're an icon here, and and last month something very special happened at the Green Bar, yeah, uh, didn't it? The big flood. Yeah, we had the flood of June the 23rd of 19, uh, 2016, and we were. I couldn't even get home from here. They see the see downtown is in a dip. You couldn't get out and you couldn't get in. And my son, he lost a brand new car. The water just took it. The water didn't come up; it came down. It rained so hard that people on the up on the mountains were flooded. But the water hit them for it. People in the bottom. It was terrible, and it's still terrible. You go through town now, on the main street, you don't see it. But you go on the off street, it's still terrible. A lot of people are still out of homes and staying with moms and dads and sisters and brothers and grandchildren. But they, we coming back. And it ruined the three golf courses. We were closed here for two weeks. This place, see, it went down into that basement here. It didn't hurt up here that bad. All the water went down, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, we made it. We recuperated. And, and, I, and I really enjoy working. I have no problem at all coming to work. Sometimes, like you said, I don't feel like it. But here I am. The flood wasn't exactly what I was thinking of, but I'm glad you brought it up because mm -hmm. uh, I know that the... Uh, the owner of the Greenbrier, Mr. Justice, uh, during that time, actually closed it down closed for a while and opened it up weeks. to the uh, and opened up to the public to have a place to stay, and he gave them food, which was good. Yeah, mm -hmm. but what I was thinking of last month, Frank, was something special here at the Greenbrier. Oh, they celebrated they a special birthday. They celebrated my birthday. They combined my birthday and my seniority, and gave me three days. They gave me April the seventh. April the 8th and April the 9th. My birthday is April the 1st. So they took my birthday and my, my uh, anniversary is in May. So they gave me those three days, it was kind of slow business. They gave me those three days and April the 8th, they really gave me a party. Oh, they gave me more than I deserve. I never would have thought they will do that much for me. They invited all my family, I didn't even know they was coming. They come from Ohio, Virginia, West Virginia, Indiana, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, all my family. I didn't know this coming. And I looked at so where you where y'all going? They said, <laughs> really? It was nice. It was really nice. They really did. And they gave me, you know, just give give me the building. See, I'm the ambassador of the building anyway. This I just had the whole thing for three days. And it was nice. It was really nice. And, and they not mm -hmm. only invited your family in, they invited but the guests. they they sent emails out to yeah. everybody that's ever been to the yeah, Greenbrier Green right. and said, "Come up and help, us, help celebrate us celebrate Frank Mosley's birthday." The first day they did that, and they gave me three days. Several days now, say just this past just a couple about a month or so. Now you t only thing out, you only thing we're missing was you all. <laughs> That's right. We wish we could have been here too. It was nice. It was, I really enjoyed it. And I still got some of the cake at home now. <laughs> got oh, to so now you're, uh, as, if I understand it right, you're a temporary worker here. Do you think there you'll ever get a permanent job? If I stay long enough, <laughs> I might get a permanent job. But right now, I'm temporary. As far as I'm concerned, nobody has never told me I'm permanent. They didn't tell me. Did nobody tell me to leave? And I need a job. I just kept staying, and I finally just kept transferring, you know. Yeah. Now, see, when you transfer here, you get you keep your company seniority, but you're new in that department, you know, when you go to it. So I started out new in the dining room, and new in the bus, in the bus board, new in the washing dishes, new washing parts, yeah, new. Do I just some? I don't just about every job I had in this building. Mm -hmm. but, well, Frank, I think anybody that watches this video in the future will see a couple things. They'll see a, a, a guy that has loved his work. Oh, yeah. And he I loves love, people. Love but him. more importantly, he'll see a, a man who is still has great enthusiasm at the age of 84. Yeah, 84, yeah. 
A lot of people ask me, so when you going to retire? You know what I tell them? I can't spell retire. So if I retire, I got to write retirement resume. I can't spell it. So that's my excuse. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't thank you enough for spending time with us here time. Now, I might could write quit, but I can't re write retire. I can't spell it. So anyway, that's, that's my excuse. Frank, if you could sum up and in, 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 in wave your, your, if you were telling the people watching what, what it means to be a professional in your mind, what, what comes to your mind? You're obviously a professional. Well, the first thing I would tell them, I tell the young people to come here, is do your job. If they wouldn't hire you, if they need you, be on time. And, and just don't give anybody any problems. That's the main thing. We got a lot of help here. Every time you look at the Daniel Manager's office, this ain't that. that ain't, I don't want them all there. I don't like this. Don't like, just don't, just do your work. Do what they hired you to do. And let the, let the management take care of the problem. You, you, I can't solve no problems here. Best I can do is do my part and let the people that they hire do it. But a lot of people come out they want to pay their in the off day. And that happens in the all business. I know from downtown, all they want is pay their in the off day. They don't care whether they have work or not. And it's not fair to the company. It's not fair. It show it it finally show up. Thank you, Frank. Appreciate it. <laughs> That's, and, and I just love people and, and the company's been good to me. I'll be sure they've been really good. I have no no regrets whatsoever working here. None. Thank you so much for sharing this time. Man? This time with us, Frank. That, that's what make my day. That's well, what, see if I hadn't come to work, we get to meet you all. Well, you're you're an inspiration and a blessing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank and you all are blessed to come to visit us. We enjoy you. You at home for a reason. It's your home. Absolutely. Thank you.